Hey everyone, Chris here with another filler episode. Today I thought I'd take a quick look at the only Flash game I've ever spent any money on. And that game is Gemcraft Labyrinth. Now I know what many of you are probably thinking, why in the world would you spend money on a Flash game of all things? Well to put it simply, this game is good enough to be anything else other than a Flash game. I mean seriously, this is pretty epic stuff right here. But you don't have to take my word for it, let's just get into this thing here. And that's my game right there, but let's start new. Now there's a bit of a story to this game about a village or something, and then it gets removed, it disappears, and some labyrinth appears in its place, filled with monsters and whatnot. Yeah, the story's kind of forgettable, but really it's just the backdrop and setting for what is going to be a long game. And going into it here, what's the first thing you notice? Yeah, this is a tower defense style game. Well, for the most part. The thing is that unlike typical tower defense games where you have towers that you place and everything, like, I mean, you have still have towers that you place in this game, like these are them right here, but instead of the towers actually working on their own accord, you have to put gems into them. And then those gems determine how that tower functions. Like, for instance, on this particular level, I have access to multiple damage gems, which have a chance to inflict damage multiple times, and poisonous gems, which actually cause damage over a period of time. So, let's see here. I'm going to click on this one, and you could actually choose different grades of gems. I mean, the highest grade gems are extremely powerful, and you can actually make them as powerful as you can get them. So even though it tops out at 12 here, you can get them pretty strong. Anyways, put the gem in there, and I'm probably going to put a wall there, just so that they route around and stuff. I don't really have to, but anyways, let's get going. And it actually takes a moment for the gem to get installed, and there it goes. And there come the enemies. Yeah, it's typical tower defense fair, only it has the whole gem backdrop to it. There's eight different kinds of gems you can get, and you can actually unlock them if you have enough mana. Your mana is at the top of the screen here. You get mana every time you kill an enemy, and you spend mana on better gems and better towers and everything. And there's other structures too, like there's traps here that you can place, and traps go in line and enhance the effect of the gem but reduce its damage. Plus, you can also place amplifiers, which cause the gems surrounding the amplifier to get stronger. And there's also shrines, but I don't really use them that much. But one of the really neat things you can do is when you make a gem, like, I mean, I just made a green one here, what you can do, once I have enough mana for it, is you can actually combine two gems together if my mouse would behave. <laughs> I need to get a new mouse. But yeah, you can combine two gems together and then get the effects of both of them into a single gem, which is a pretty neat thing. You can actually do this up to three times without any penalties. If you try to combine more than three effects into a single gem, it kind of de devalues the gem, sort of, just makes the effects not as strong, and you only get the first three effects anyways, so... Triple gems are the best way to go, but normally you only have access to two different kinds, except for some really special levels later on. There's also a fast forward button. I actually spend most of the time playing on fast forward speed because, yeah, normal speed is just really slow. But, you know, if you're new to the game and still getting used to all the different things you can do, because I'm only just scratching the surface now. Like, I mean, let me show you a later part of the game here. Right here is one of the later levels, like, not too much later, because there's over 170, well, 169 levels to face in this game. This is sort of like about the third or the fourth one you reach. I don't really remember exactly. But as you can see, it's a bit different, because it starts you off with some traps instead of towers, and it has some interesting layouts here, sort of. But most importantly, it has these monster nests here, which enemies will spawn from, but you can destroy these nests so that enemies will stop spawning from them. Plus, it's worth some bonus points, too. Or specifically in terms of things like battle amulets. 
basically during the course of a battle, if you get one of these particular, they're kind of like mini challenges. If you manage to complete one of them, it multiplies the amount of experience you get at the end of a battle. And then that experience goes towards skill points, which you can spend to make yourself more powerful. So let's get this one going here. And some walls down. Oh, I still need a gem. Um, hmm. Let's see what happens. And if it seems like they're a bit too weak, you can just advance it, sort of. Like, I can just do like that and it advances the wave and makes the enemies come even faster. And you can actually quickly upgrade gems by pushing the U key while over top of them. Or if you're really crazy, just advance all of them. <laughs> Actually, that was probably a really stupid idea. Um, it's if I upgrade it, it's gonna... Uh, yeah, because what ends up happening is if they touch your orb here, it decreases your mana. If you run out of mana when they touch your orb, you kind of lose the orb and die. No, I actually survived that. <laughs> I wasn't even trying, I was just goofing around there. But yeah, at the end of battle you get a multiplier based on the settings you used and the battle amulets you earned, like the ones down here, do a thousand overkill damage, gain 200 mana from starting early. And then there's also a summon multiplier because you can actually, um, let me get back into the level here. When you're actually in the level you can drop gems on top of these parts right here, and that will actually summon more monsters. Because what you can do is you can create bombs out of the gems using this particular thing right here. You create the gem, and then you just drag and drop it over top of an enemy, or one of these, or even one of these, and just blow it up. <laughs> well, sort of. The gem bombs aren't really that strong. I tend not to use them, but... That's the one major draw of the game, though, is that despite having all of these levels here, the thing is, when you actually go into a level, you have these battle settings you can access. And the battle settings basically determine just how difficult the game will be. You can set how many monsters there are, you can set how many hit points they have, what kind of waves you get encounter, the number of waves you encounter. There's even a special endurance mode, which is only available if you buy the game. And the endurance mode is basically survive as long as you possibly can. And then a bunch of other settings over here. I haven't actually beat the game, so I haven't unlocked this particular one yet. So I have no idea what these shadow things are. But I suspect I'll find out eventually. But yeah, let's say... If I set it up like this... That creates a 14.22 experience multiplier. The question is, can I survive it? Well, <laughs> I have a ton of skill points from all the experience I've gained. So what I can do is I can just really advance these numbers here. I give myself all kinds of crazy abilities. Still going. <laughs> I have a lot of skill points. Um, <laughs> I thought I'd be out by now. Um, oh, more damage. Okay. So now despite the fact I set it up in such a way that this battle would probably be really difficult, you know, they've started me with a gem, I've got a lot of mana to start with, you know, I got a good chance here, so let's see over here. 
First, I'm going to extend my mana pool. And doing that just basically gives you more mana to work with and multiplies how much mana you get when you destroy enemies. So it's it's an important thing to do early on, but of course if you do it too much early on, you kind of don't have any mana to spend on your gems. So, And you can also d drop gems onto the anvil here as gem bombs, and that gets you the mana back for it. And I like to do that with the starting gem, just because you get a lot for it. And we'll make ourselves a triple gem here. And you can easily duplicate gems just by pushing the D button over it. And again, easily upgrade with the U button. Do it some more. And another thing you can do is you can actually change the target priority. So as you can see, it says nearest to orb, but you can actually change it to things like random or fewest hit points. One that I wish was in here was highest hit points. Like they have something that says highest banishment cost slash special, but it's not quite the same thing. I'm gonna leave that one set to nearest to orb. And I'm also gonna put some walls down like this. There we go. Okay. Advance it a few times. Let's see what happens. So yeah, despite the fact I set the battle settings really difficult, the fact that I've got so many skill points sort of negates that. So that's really what the battle settings are for. It's just so that when you actually have all those skill points, you can still play the game and still get some enjoyment out of it. Otherwise, it'd be too easy. I hate these things. These are swarm monsters. Usually in this game, it's better to have a single gem that's really strong. I mean, that's the whole theory behind this particular one right here, the Bloodbound gem. It gets stronger the more enemies it destroys. The trouble is that when you're dealing with these swarm monsters, if you don't have multiple towers going, it's really hard to nail them all. So it's kind of like getting a good balance going between all your different tower types and everything. And yeah, getting a lot of battle amulets from advancing it like that. Get some more mana going. But yeah, you get the gist of it. It's basically a tower defense game, but it has a lot of features to it. I mean, here, let me show you a really late in an endurance round. So yeah, here we are about 50 waves almost into an endurance round. And as you can see, I'm doing pretty well. I've got some grade 9 gems going here. Got a lot of mana. Oh, I can upgrade that one now. Yeah, upgrading is a really handy thing to do because making the gems and having to combine them and everything. Oh, and I got a wave of four giant monsters coming up. Now this is interesting because these waves are based, the amount of mana you get is always sort of constant. It's based on how many enemies you're fighting. So when the giant waves have only just four monsters or even less, one thing that's fun to do is to summon a lot of monsters on these waves if you're powerful enough to do it, because you'll get more mana that way, since summoning is based on a const it's a constant value. It's like four monsters for this one, eight for this one, twelve for this one, etc. So let's go ahead and put sixteen more well, it says nineteen. Okay, nineteen more into that. And I think I can upgrade that one too. Yeah, I got a mana gathering trap here so that I get more mana out of the monsters. And yeah, I'm just obliterating them, as you can see. They don't stand a chance at this point. Mind you, you know, later on, the endurance waves do get much stronger. Though it actually tops out at about... I found, I found this out through some really ridiculous gameplay, but the number of waves, or not the, num the number of hit points that the enemies have in the waves can't ever exceed 3,333,333,333. Why such a arbitrary number, I don't know, but 
There you go. That's your limit. So, anyways, that's pretty much all I got to say about the game. If you want to buy the premium content, which is basically just more abilities, the endurance mode, more skills to put your points into, the premium content's only $5. You have to go through a third party to get it, though. So, and there's different third parties that offer it. Like, if you get, go to the game's website at www.gameinabottle.com, the it'll refer you to... I think it was GamerSafe, and, you know, that works, I guess. It just seems weird, though, having to pay for a Flash game. I don't, I don't know, I'm still not used to it. But in any case, it's a fun game, especially if you love the tower defense stuff. Actually, pretty much only if you love the tower defense stuff, because, like, I mean, as far as tower defense games go, this one is pretty darn good. But it's nothing spectacular that a person who isn't into tower defense is going to change their mind about. So if you're not a huge tower defense fan, or if your interest in it is very low to begin with, this one's probably not going to do anything special for you. But if you like tower defense games, it's a really fun play. And you don't have to spend any money on it unless you want those premium features. Anyways, that's all i got to say, so stay tuned for the next ep episode of... <laughs> episode the next filler episode of ancient dos games which will be two saturdays from now and maybe i should call it ancient windows games because i'm going to be looking at a windows 3.1 game particularly the only one i really still play anymore because it actually works on my windows xp system still and you guys will find out what game it is soon so stay tuned